Hey, DCS TV viewers, Chris Nichols here from the camera store, and we're gonna do things a little bit differently today. As you'll see, I'm gonna have my pom-pom on. Today, we're not doing the Invisalab setup, and uh, we're also in a new part of Calgary, in Bridgeland, and actually, we've never shot here before. I don't know why. It's a very cool, funky old neighborhood, and it's kind of in the midst of gentrifying, but there's some neat architecture and some neat street photography, and I've got the perfect tool for it. I've got the Leica M10. We're gonna be looking at this camera today. Very excited about the shooting experience on this thing, but more importantly, the best part about Bridgeland right now is that we're waiting in line because we're gonna go get some of the best ramen that you can find in YYC. And before I talk about the M10 today, I just want to kind of go through a brief history of what Leica's has done with their bodies. You know, the quintessential body is probably the Leica M3. I mean, that's the design that everybody fell in love with. And of course, the M6, which is my personal favorite, kept that sleek design, that sleek thin body while modernizing the overall camera. But you know, when you got into the digitals like the M8 and the M9, it had to get thicker, unfortunately, because it had no space for the batteries and the circuit boards and the heat sinks and all the rest that required to make a digital electronic camera operate properly. And unfortunately, those bodies, I always felt, not only were they very thick and very uncomfortable to hold, frankly, but they also lost a lot of that graceful and handsome design. And, you know, let's face it, part of buying a Leica is because you're buying into that graceful design. So now that we've got the M10 here, I'm very pleased to see that they've gone back to that small body design. Shaved off four millimeters, again, it looks beautiful. It just has a more natural balance that looks aesthetically pleasing. On top of that, very comfortable in the hand, a nice weight, and yet yeah, this camera is a fantastic mixture of not only the classic feel, but also the modern design. what that's gonna look like. Oh, it looks like trees. Now, when it comes to metering on an M10, you know, it is a modern camera now. You do have a multi-segment meter as well as a classic center way to meter and spot and so on. But you know, with Leicas, you are gonna have to remember that you gotta pay attention a little bit to things like exposure compensation and what your meter's gonna be doing. You know, I take a scene here and I've got bright clouds, bright sky, and white paint, and so that is classically gonna underexpose my image a little bit. Now, I do like that we have the return of this back thumb grip on here. Not only does it give you a nice secure feel, but you've got a dial that you can customize. And in this particular camera, I've customized this to just do a quick exposure comp change. And it works really, really well. So just keep in mind, you know, buying a Leica, part of it is that purest experience experience, doing manual control, making exposure changes. Your meter's not gonna always be perfect like a Nikon or Canon or get you the dynamic range that you need to be able to push it in post. This takes a little bit of forethought on your part and a little bit of uh, participation, but that is most of the fun. As I bring up my viewfinder here, I do wanna talk about what the M10's doing differently now. We actually found that from the good old days, the 0.72 magnification viewfinder, that was always my favorite. It was a good general purpose, you know. Then your 0.58s and your 0.85s and whatnot. But with the digital bodies, they actually kind of changed that. They often went to something like a 0.68 magnification. And the M10 is actually back to about a 0.73, so very close to a classic camera. And that all helps to kind of just bring back that nostalgic feeling and bring back that kind of camera that you're used to. They've also calibrated the, the frame lines to be sort of optimum between one and two meters as far as parallax goes. So if you're shooting portraits of people or you know general close photography, you're gonna find they match very, very nicely. And at farther distances, again, they work very, very accurately. Like anything up close, you're gonna get some parallax, but overall, it's actually very, very usable. And again, as I say, it feels very familiar if you've used an older Leica. So first off, this is sad because this is an RGO chair. That's a quality, quality office chair. Um, it's got what I can only assume is urine on it. That's probably why they threw it out. But uh, you know, you got the, the paint peeling on the wood. You've got this vintage chair. This is classic Leica, you know, <laughs> This is, this is screaming to be shot on a Leica. Uh, I'm gonna actually make an artistic decision not to shoot this photograph because for me, that's actually a more true artistic expression or something like that. You know, one of the things I love about just wandering around neighborhoods taking pictures is it gives you a lot of time to think and, and a lot of things kind of 
make you think. Like, for example, if the red fades away, you can park there, right? I mean, that's what that means. You need the red circle to say no parking. Uh, if you're a loyal viewer, you've been watching us for a while, you'll make note that I've also consented to using a strap so that I can do dumb shit like this. And uh, I do like the Gordy straps. I'm gonna use a strap today because frankly, if I drop this camera, I can't afford to fix it. And uh, also, it's a heavy camera. You know, I mean, that's the thing about like M10s. They got some weight to them. There's some solidness there. Hi, kitty. And uh, it really, it really helps with the stability, you know, when you're trying to get that shot. So yeah, I do like it. Another important thing I want to talk about is the menu system on this camera. It's actually quite nice. They've improved it in a nice way. Very simple, just three buttons, live view, playback, and menu. And when you go in here, it first comes up with your favorites, and that's a nice feature. You can customize all those options. It's a brilliant idea, actually. I mean, if you're really trying to get into the menu to do something, you're not in a rush. But if you want a quick menu, hit it once. There you go, they're all there. And if I keep hitting the menu button, it'll cycle through all the pages. It's actually a really smart way. I don't know who changed over there at Laika because the menus have traditionally been pretty messy and nasty. This is gorgeous. It works great. It's very, very intuitive. <sighs> I hate this. I hate this because I just, every time I see a photo like this, you know I'm going to take a shot of it. I, I hate these pictures. But I'm going to do it. This whole video today is just going to be an urban detail shot extravaganza. Look at that, hey, you, you can't not take a picture of that. It's just beautiful. Uh, what an old phone book. That's an old phone booth, really, to be honest with you. I took a shot already. I'm gonna get in there with a wide angle, but I am already noticing we got dark shadows, bright yellow book, and uh, it's a good point here to now talk about the LM10's dynamic range, and in fact, the sensor in general. Uh, the M240 was a 24 megapixel full frame sensor, just like this. However, they've done something here, whether it's a brand new sensor, it does have this new Maestro engine of uh, two, and I am noticing definitely better low light performance. You know, looking at the two side by side, you're gonna probably get about half a stop better with the new M10, and dynamic range as well. These cameras definitely like shadows better than highlights, but compared to an M240, you can get quite a bit more in the shadows out of this camera. So for a shot like this, even when I'm looking at it, I'm concerned about it, I know that I can pull that up. I've got my histogram, everything's fitting. This is a good exposure. See again, this is what I'm talking about. I, this is classic Leica shooting. I just, I don't know. How many people do you think have taken a picture of this bike? Like a billion? Billions? Yeah, billions. All right, I'm going to I'm going to very difficultly move on. Oh, I'll take a picture of it. Oh, I feel dirty. Now, if you watch an earlier video on the Leica MD, you know that I actually really ended up enjoying that experience, even though that camera was uh, you know, just stripped of all of its digital features. No LCD, no video capability or anything like that. Now the Leica M10, well, no video capability. They've stripped that away. And although we do have a live view screen on the back and it has been updated to just about a million dots, it's, it's nice and clear, uh, we're still going back to a very pure, simple kind of experience. And I know a lot of people on the MD thought that that was really bad value for the dollar. And of course, this isn't gonna win any best bang for your buck awards. But I do like that aesthetic of it being being simple and pure and clean. I think everybody, when they saw the ISO dial on here, just lost their minds. They were so excited about it. And I like the concept, but this is one of the weak points for me. Although it's done in a way that looks aesthetically like an M3's rewind knob, and that's all sexy and everything, it is quite difficult to pull up. You're really gonna have to get used to this, this way of grabbing with your fingertips and yanking it up, turning it, and then clicking it back down. But if you're shooting here, it's kind of hard. I mean, I guess you could, flick it up with your thumb and play with it. It's just not the best implemented device. I do like though that you've got an auto setting and I do also like that you've got an M setting where you can set whatever ISO you want for that particular button. So maybe you can tell from my face, um, I'm finding Bridgeland quite frustrating to shoot in because everybody just leaves this eclectic out and I've got a Leica and I'm, I'm supposed to take a picture of this. I mean, look at this thing. I don't even know what time period it's from. It's been sitting out here the whole time. It's got a hole in it. Someone cut into it. I guess I have to take a picture of it. You know, it's funny, I was just thinking about how they're gentrifying this neighborhood and you got all these modern buildings and you kind of lose some charm. But then I'm like, really? I take it back, man. It's just, you can't, you can't escape this stuff in this neighborhood. 
Unfortunately, I've got these, uh, these branches in front, but one of the great things about the M10, of course, I do have the live view back, and I actually really enjoyed that on the M240. You can happily ignore it if you want to, but it's nice to have it. I can get these high angle shots. Bam, just like that without looking through the viewfinder. And uh, you know, a lot of people were kind of complaining on the M10, like this would have been the perfect camera for a Fuji-esque hybrid EVF. But I don't know, I mean, the whole point of buying these things is that you do have a true optical rangefinder. They probably don't have space in there to put that anyways. And frankly, you can always get the Visiflex, the EVF, to go on the top here if you want to have that kind of capability. Now, there is an Olympus EVF, which is like 250 bucks, which works great, but I know that if you're a Leica user buying a Leica, you're gonna buy the Leica version anyways, because it's 900 bucks and it says Leica on it somewhere in small writing. So two other things I just want to make note of on the M10. First off, we've got our classic frame lines uh, selector preview switch here. So a lot of people are going to like that if you're coming from an older camera. The other cool thing about this 6-bit coding that they changed, which is a nice kind of touch, now, like has always had six spec coding, so you can tell what lens is on there, what apertures are available, and uh, to do any distortion corrections and that kind of stuff. But there was a problem where if you manually entered in lenses, you know, you said, okay, well, I'm putting on a non six bit coded lens, and I put that on and I entered it manually. If I then went and took another six bit coded lens later and stuck it on, I'd have to remember to go in the menu and cancel that manual selection. Otherwise, my 28 mil would still be referred to as a 35 or a 50 or whatever I was using last. So now on the M10, it automatically detects that and switches it back. It's a minor point, but it was kind of a pain in the butt on the older cameras. You know, one of the things that I like on this camera, pushing your center button brings up the info screen and it's a handy way to, you know, see your exposure comp. I've got it set here quickly and make sure that all your settings are where you want them to be, card space and battery life. I'm at 15% battery, which is actually not bad, but I've been really, you know, just religious about turning the camera on and off when I'm not using it. I do love this thinner body, but unfortunately it does have one downside, and that is they've had to go with a smaller battery here. It's actually about 500 milliamps less than the 240. You know that's gonna hurt somewhere. Now, like it says, they've improved the efficiency on it and the power usage, but still, I'm thinking maybe 250 to 400 pictures, kind of depending as I'm shooting around here. So keep that in mind. You're probably gonna want to buy some extra batteries more than you would normally for a Leica on this camera. Don't worry, I'm sure they're only like $250 Canadian each. This has been a very strange trip today here going through Bridgeland and I now find myself in this eerie ring of hay bales, a children's glove right there uh, put aside, strangely placed orange pylons and otherwise this quiet desolation. And so I'm gonna now permeate this with the sound of this Leica M10 shutter. Listen to this. This is like a John Lennon music video. It is a brand new shutter on the M10. They had to do that to make the body smaller. Nice and quiet, as usual with any Leica shutter, and super stable. You'll still love that 15th of a second handheld. There's no problem, 30th of a second, no issue. So don't feel afraid. The body's changed and the shutter has too, but it's still very much a Leica shutter. Okay, this is the dumbest gripe ever, but it keeps bugging me. So when you look at the on-off switch here, this is actually off with the red showing, and that is on. That seems backwards to me. Does that seem backwards to you? It's driving me crazy. So here I find myself in a children's playground, totally abandoned, uh, very Chernobyl-esque kind of thing. And this is a goofy video. This is one of our most surreal and strange videos. And I think it's because of the neighborhood. I mean, the photos here today have just been very weird, eclectic mixes of stuff. But you know, I think we're pretty much done with the LM10. I have had fun with it today, despite being a weird experience here. You know, it seems like every Leica before now, the 8.2, uh, the 9, the 240, the MD, the monochromes, they were all attempts at trying to get that Leica experience, you know, that quintessential feel. They're trying to capture it, and they're all trying very different things, and they feel exactly like that. They were attempts. And I'm happy to say that using the M10 today, just with the return to the proper body size, the simplicity of the control interface, uh, the new sensor, the new shutter mechanism, everything just feels and works really, really well. And I have to say that I feel like this is probably the most Leica-esque pure experience that I've had 
to the old film bodies. You know, I like the MD a lot. I like the direction. I think they finally secured it here. So, you know, if you're looking for that experience, which is what these cameras are all about, this is definitely a great way to go. You're gonna love the nicer image quality, but overall it's the handling, the feel, it just feels right. As far as having things like the LCD screen and you know the modern thumb thing, I think this is all great attractions for a more modern camera, especially one that's digital. I think they found the right balance here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, even though today's experience was surreal, this camera is absolutely solid. And uh, I think you guys will like it. Don't forget, check us out on Twitter. Go to our Instagram channels. You can see a lot of the photos that we shot today. You can see a lot of the stuff that we do on a regular basis. Please subscribe, please keep watching. We always appreciate you guys watching our videos. And uh, until next time, if you're looking for a brand new Leica, this is the best one out there. <laughs>